but the old blends with the new. History and modernism live happily together in a cosmopolitan environment, with Bloemfontein recently playing host to round four of the Stanek Rally Championship. In stark contrast to the stately South African Appeal Court building, the Loch Logan waterfront is an example of the modern Bloemfontein and provided a colourful venue for the start of the mountain trial. The trial saw national championship rallying return to Bloemfontein for the first time in three years. And from the early 80s to 1996, the rally earned a fearsome reputation on the South African calendar. The mountain trial saw the championship reach the halfway stage with 1997 champions Havoc and Judd holding a narrow seven-point lead over multiple drivers champion Serge Damso and co-driver Guy Hodgson. Havoc remembers those halcyon days of the mountain trial and this year's event represents another challenge. Yeah, it's actually nice to be back in, in this area. Uh, of course, the, the event itself is very much a, a rally purist event and I've always enjoyed it very much. It's quite a lot of high-speed stuff and it's quite tough on the, on the engines of the cars. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to it. The mountain trial is a high-speed event with co-drivers armed with rally pace notes playing key roles in the search for glory. The navigator is, is an integral part of the team on this, on this rally. Uh, the driver, to a major extent, drives on what he hears as opposed to what he sees because uh, the, the navigator can see that this crest is flat out and the driver will be saying, but I want to break. The navigator will be saying, but it's flat out. So to, to a certain extent, the, the navigator is able to dictate the speed of the car. So it's a, it makes uh, uh, the event very enjoyable for a navigator. An inverted start order also provided for something a little different. It's a whole new experience for us. Um, it's great for our sponsors, our sponsors, so they can get some mileage out of it. And uh, it's been a rush since this morning. We've been here first, scrutineering, documentation, and uh, first on the road. So we're going to go like hell and see if they can match our time. <laughs> a bit of a tug-in-cheek comment from Adrian Karp as he and Rickus Faria found themselves in an unfamiliar role as first car off the start ramp and first car on the road. With the start drawing a good crowd of rally enthusiasts, the Eastern Cape crew were followed by the little Fiat Uno of the Marais brothers, representing the Witzenberg Motor Club in the Western Cape. Next up were another Eastern Cape pair in Johan Stadium and Monet Ferreira, with crews heading for the opening special stage at the historic Brandkopf racing circuit on the outskirts of Bloemfontein. Motorsport enthusiasts with long memories will remember the days when the Brandkopf circuit hosted Formula One races that were part of the South African Championship. Before the track was closed down in the mid-1970s, some of the great names in South African circuit racing paraded their skills at what was one of the most popular race venues in South Africa. The track itself has withstood the ravages of time to remain in remarkably good condition, and the sight and sound of high-speed cars back in action at Brandkopf brought a lump to many a throat of now middle-aged fans who allowed their thoughts to drift back in time. The Brandkopf special stage drew an impressive crowd with the circuit quick to demonstrate that it's still as testing a layout as any to be found on the current national circuit racing calendar. The inverted start order also gave crews who normally find themselves forgotten men at the back of the field a chance to strut their stuff in front of a large audience. The back to front grid also provided for plenty of entertainment for the crowds as they waited for the big guns to appear on the scene. With cars starting at one minute intervals, what was a rally special stage often resembled a Group N saloon car race. Charging through the right-hander leading into the S's was the Castrol top car Toyota Hilux in the hands of motor journalists Dion Skuman and Jan Syme. Hot on their heels were top class N1 contenders Alan Worms and Brendan Noonan and class championship leaders Rodney Fasaki and Caroline Simmer. The right-hander before the S's can be a tricky proposition and when Robin and David Goodman got themselves into a hairy tank slap situation, they went scooting off the circuit and gave a few brave spectators a serious wake-up call. Fissa Duplessis and Lisa Joubert were just starting the stage when they were overtaken by veteran Spotty Woodhead and Alan Carter. And this time the Goodmans managed to come up with a more conventional passage into the S's. While Stefan van Dijk and Mark Pym were making steady progress in a Toyota Conquest, the Castrol Toyota Hilux was hors de combat and Fissa Duplessis and Lisa Joubert were in trouble. The Duplessis-Joubert Nissan Sentra had popped a motor in a big way and was headed for retirement. 
The next crew to run into a spot of bother at the approach to the S's were Richard Bam and Ashley Haddocker in the Class N2 Toyota Conquest. By the time they were back on an even keel, Dolph Kutzier and Eddie van der Valt had squeezed their way through. Behind them, Pierre Hursen and Thilo van Festenhagen decided the best way to tackle the S's was to eliminate them altogether. They opted for the direct route through the grass, and apart from losing the pair valuable time in the Class A6 battle, it appeared to work OK. With the quicker cars and more experienced crews now out on the circuit, Enzo Kuhn and Steve Krobelar in the top car BMW were hugely spectacular through a complex of corners that were creating major problems for other crews. Rising star Quivers Rus and Neil Ferri in the Castrol Dunlop Toyota Corolla joined the tank slap brigade with the pair part of the scrap in the highly competitive Class N2 category. Stage two on the mountain trial was a gravel affair just down the road from Brandkop, with team total Toyota crew Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper central figures in Class N2. Behind them were Class N3 contenders Cliff Blackman and Johan Klaassen in the team total Nissan Sentra, with Bertil Mostert and Kovas Frey off to a solid start in Class A7. Chasing after them were veteran Hannes Krobler and Nick Haddon, who were busy taking early control of Class N3 in the total Bridgestone Nissan Sentra. Zula Natal pair Tony Ball and Marty Olafia in the Bulwark Park VW Golf were among the Class A7 challenges, along with the Pretoria pair of Barry Krobler and Mike Burrows in the team total VW Golf, who were early season championship leaders in the category. Fernando Rueda and Jill Talton in the X Factory Debu Lanos were among the Class A8 challengers, while Class A6 champions Hogan Fecken and Dave Lukovic were out for the first time in the new Dunair Toyota Corolla. Right behind them, Kali van der and Andre Vermeulen were out in the ex Feck and Lukovic's Toyota Conquest. Race cam action from the Reeks towing VW Golf of Chart van der Valt and Cindy Harding, who were making the early running in Class A7. After a shaky start to the season, the pair won their class on the Sassol Rally, round three of the Stanek Championship, and were looking for a repeat performance on the mountain trial. Van der Valt and Harding were candidates for a top five place, as were Etienne Lawrence and Barry White in the team total Toyota Conquest. With White filling in for Robert Paisley, who had business commitments, the KwaZulu Natal pair were quickly into a solid third place in the early stages of the mountain trial. Stage three with Skok Berger Jr. and Greg Godrich in the glass fit Jojo Tanks Opal quickly among the front runners in Class N1. The Opal pair were involved in a three-way fight at the top of the Class N1 leaderboard with Alan Worms and Brendan Noonan trying to get their season back on track. Yeah, we've had a, we've had a bad season this year. It hasn't started off too well for us. But uh, we're definitely the quickest in the class. We'll just get our reliability up there. And uh, hopefully our, our luck's going to change and we're going to turn that around and uh, you know start winning races and, 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 and coming back in the championship. Class N2 is Toyota territory. And Kubus Ruiz and Neil Ferri in the Castrol Dunlop Toyota Corolla found themselves locked in battle again with the team total Toyota Corolla of Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper. Going into the mountain trial, Saunders and Hooper led both the Group N championship and Class N2. Where Class N3 was concerned, Hannes Krobler and Nick Haddon were quickly in charge, with Krobler a winner of the mountain trial in the days of four-wheel drive and turbocharging. Uh, I won it uh, twice uh, from when I started rallying, and I think from a driver's point of view or a crew point of view, with a car, it's one of the nicest events. It's very fast, it's in the, there's a lot of mountain passes, very demanding on the car and the driver. Um, it's not that spectator friendly, but I think it's one of the nice uh, rallies on the calendar. The KwaZulu Natal pairing of Tony Ball and Marty Olafia was struggling a little in Class A7 in the Bulwa Park VW Golf, as were Class A6 contenders Jean Pierre Damso and Pierre Aris, who were out for the first time in the new team total Toyota Corolla. A lone regional championship outing in the car. Damso and Aris were still finding their feet, but Hergen Fecken and Dave Lukovic were flying in the Dunair Toyota Corolla, which was also having its first national outing. Carl and myself, uh, we only did about 100 k's together, stage case. So I reckon we're still gonna. It's gonna take us a few more rallies this season to get it ready. Um, but otherwise, I'm I'm pretty happy at this stage. 
more race cam action from the Thunderbolt Harding car, with Thunderbolt having to work hard on a special stage that was short, tight, and in places, a little rough. The Reeks towing car was already involved in a tight scrap with Fekin and Lukovic, but after their shaky start to the season, there were signs that Thunderbolt and Harding were back in business, and back to the sort of form that has brought them three successive Class A7 championships. Behind the Class A7 and Class A6 runners, the Class A8 big guns were in unfamiliar territory at the back of the field. With Paolo Piazzamuzzo and Richard Leake in the Sassel Motorcraft Ford Escort quickly involved in an early duel with Etienne Lawrence and Barry White. Race cam action is from the Ford Escort, with Piazzamuzzo and Leake another crew looking for a good mountain trial result after a couple of early disappointments in the championship. Everyone expected this year's Static Championship to develop into a two-horse race, with the factory VW Motorsport Golf of Jan Habeck and Doug Judd one of those horses involved. 100 turn of him and left wrap. 50. Then wrap and then T right. 200 T right. 100 T right. The other key horse in the race is Castrol Toyota Conquest crew, Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson, with day one of the event offering some interesting tactical choices. Well, I think, uh, you know, the first four stages, I think, is quite important to take it uh, uh, a bit slow because, uh, it's, you know, it's, you could damage the car quite easily in these little stages, and then you sit with it uh, for the whole day tomorrow. The Damso, Hodgson and Havoc Judd combinations were running within seconds of each other when the field headed back to Brandkop for the final stage of the day. This time the stage was run in reverse and in class N1 only seconds separated the team total Toyota Taz of Rodney Fasaki and Caroline Simmer and the team total Opal Corsa of Alan Worms and Brendan Noonan. In a repeat of the first stage, Enzo Kun was enjoying himself hugely in the top car, BMW. The car is, is holding together and it's uh, so far, uh, it's impressed me. I mean, uh, I, I didn't expect it to, to come this far and to be as competitive, so let's see where it goes. A three-way battle in Class N2 had Kubus Roos and Neil Faree chasing after championship leaders Dean Saunders and Graham Hopper. The third crew in the equation were Cape Town pair Diffie Moreira and Donny Duval in another Toyota Corolla, who posted the quickest time at the second time of asking at Brandkop. Cliff Blackman and Johan Klaassen were running second in Class N3 in the total Bridgestone Nissan Sentra, and behind them the spectacular Berto Mostert and Kubas Frey were still among the Class A7 challengers. Class N3 leaders Hannes Krobler and Nick Haddon were on the fringes of the top 10 and had moved ahead of the team total VW Golf of Barry Krobler and Mike Burrows. Jean-Pierre Damso and Pierre Aris were still battling to get to grips with the new team total Toyota Corolla and had fallen off the pace set by Hergen Fecken and Dave Lukovic in Class A6. TAR experts Piaut Samuzzo and Leek were third overall and third in Class A8. When it comes to rallying, Jan Havoc and Douglas Judd have never been short on commitment. Back at Brancop, the VW Motorsport Golf crew were full of their normal aggression and it earned them a time that was two seconds quicker than Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson in the Castrol Toyota Conquest. With Damso and Hodgson dropping one second to the VW crew in stage two and seven seconds in stage three, it meant a deficit at the end of the day of ten seconds. Crew Bay cars dominated the top ten with the exception of the Kuhn Hrobola BMW that was running in class S20. The pair were not eligible for national championship points. Thunderbolt and Harding headed class A7 with a comfortable margin and it was the same situation in A6 for Fekin and Lukovic. Ten seconds was not much of a lead for the VW Motorsport factory crew but Havoc was happy with the day's work. We're happy with the day's work so far and I think ten seconds uh, will come in handy tomorrow so tomorrow the dice is on I think. The real rally starts tomorrow. Where drivers and co-drivers were concerned, the day was done. For hard work service personnel, next on the agenda was the long liaison section between Bloemfontein and Aliwell North, and an early start to day two of the mountain trial.